guys and gals, fellow motorcyclists, travelers of the world. Today I'm going to be sharing with you what I plan to bring with me on my big motorcycle trip. This summertime I'm going to be covering camping gear for outdoor living, electronics, tools, things of that nature. Uh, enjoy and uh, hope this helps you plan out future trips. So the way I approach this is basically like backpacking, like you're packing for a backpacking trip, but you can bring a couple of extras, you know, um, because you're not physically carrying all the weight anymore. Um, but I thought we'd first start off with my most basic standard backpacking gear list and then extend that over into motorcycling land where I'll be bringing more stuff. All right. So this is my standard camping gear. Here is my flash clip Sierra Design two-person tent that I've had since I was like age 13, still holding up great. I love it. This is a sleeping bag, my Mont Bell, I got it from my dad, super plush down bag. This is my Thermarest inflatable mattress. It blows up to be like three inches thick. It's super plush, kind of crunchy, you know, auditorily wise. It's, it's noisy to move around on, but it's super comfy. This is a little silk liner that is kind of new for me. I haven't ever really used them before. This is because, you know, I'm going to be sleeping in my sleeping bag theoretically a lot of the time while camping. And to prevent myself from having to wash my bag, I can just use a liner so I can wash this guy super easy. And it keeps my bag clean, keeps it more efficient. The bag holds up way better. Also, on really hot days or really hot nights when I'll be sleeping maybe in the desert, and in the south, southwest in the summertime, I won't really want to cuddle up to a giant down bag. I may just want to have literally the lightest sheet on me possible. So double bonus for a silk liner. After all that sleeping gear, now I've got my cook stove. Usually I had a smaller one, but because of this big trip, I want to be able to cook larger amounts of food and also be able to store it. It's an MSR cook stove. Super awesome, I've used them before. Just bought this new one for the trip though. It, it's great because it has a locking clasp right here and so you can have leftovers, um, stick them in a bear hang and be able to secure it all down and it doesn't make a mess with all your food. And inside of it, it holds most of my cooking gear too. Here's the lid. Inside we've got another smaller container of fuel. It's kind of low so I may just use this bigger one. I also have a little mug, collapsible mug. My Snow Peak collapsible stove, which connects to my fuel, as well as a little tripod to stabilize the fuel on the ground, scrub brush, dish soap, all that necessary stuff. Next, I've got my water filter, which is awesome. Just stick it in a, a nice creek and it filters out water for you. This is my first aid kit. Recommend familiarizing yourself with all of the material that's in your med kit. So then in emergency, you can quickly access everything, know what to do, use this safely. Also got some rope for bear hang, super collapsible, lightweight, but really long. Of course, can't not go camping without a headlamp. This little OR, it's outdoor research um, stuff sack, fits all of this good stuff inside of it. Just keeps it all succinct. Next, I've got my dop kit. Um, this will carry, you know, toothbrush, toothpaste, sh um, Dr. Bonner shampoo, all personal kind of gear for myself. This is a lightweight camping towel. Bought that new for this trip. This is a water bag, my dromedary. I've shown it before in previous videos, but it holds many, many, many liters, like maybe 10 or 12 liters of water. I've used it before on other motorcycling trips. Highly recommend it. It's very durable. I think the material's like Kevlar, so it's really tough. And lastly, for the standard backpacking gear, I've got my bear canster. There's lots of different kinds of bear canisters. This is the one that my dad had. Pretty sure this is like Kevlar material. Inside there's a steel cylinder tube. And when you cinch this up and do the correct knot, theoretically it's bear proof. Of course, it's good to, if there's trees around, make it a bear hang. And that's really important for keeping your food intact and not, you know, teaching the local wildlife bad habits of getting into human food. And the good thing about this is about the same size as my sleeping bag. So I can stuff my sleeping bag inside the bear hang when I'm traveling to keep my storage space small. 
So basically that's the stuff that I bring with me while I'm backpacking. This is just purely equipment stuff. So now let's get into uh, the motorcycle portion of this packing list. So this now extends beyond what I would normally bring on a backpacking trip. So here we go. So right here is my bags that I'm gonna be carrying on my bike, not including my saddle bags, which are, are currently on my bike. Here is my little day pack. I bought it relatively recently at REI. It's a uh, Flash 22, so that means it holds 22 liters of space. I wanted something that is big enough that I can, you know, carry groceries or a bundle of wood. So that's the little bag. Now, this is the big duffel bag. Um, I invested in a waterproof backpack, basically. So it's like one of those giant dry bags that you wrap up um, when you go like rafting and whatnot. So when we flip it over, we can see there's these nice padded shoulder straps and also smaller, lightweight, non-padded hip belts. So, you know, this is not my ideal backpacking backpack, but for the motorcycle purposes, I wanted something completely waterproof, but something that I could always potentially, you know, could hike in for about five miles or so, you know, park the bike, go hike in somewhere and camp the night. So this is the kind I got. So the Hummingbird, um, cargo carrier, 65 liters. So 65 is a good amount. I can stuff a lot of stuff in here. And here is my electronic portion of my packing list. I invested in a solar panel for myself so that I could be camping out on public land and uh, not need a power outlet because literally I can open this guy up, stick it in some nice sunny area, then charge up my power packs, which is what these guys are. They're basically batteries. This is my Kindle, it's my reading book. Um, I'm a super diehard fan of paperbacks. It felt very conflicted buying this uh, digital book, but actually um, it's the older generation. So instead of it being actually digital, like a computer, they use graphite to create the words. Lots of good books. Um, I'm a big reader, so I gotta have my books with me. And when I'm in town, it's good to have a connecting cord. So then I can charge, you know, my Kindle with one, my smartphone with the other, um, charge two devices. So I recommend getting the two USB um, ported ones. Then next I've got my external hard drive for saving photos and videos off of my smartphone. Because my smartphone only holds so many gigs of media, I wanna be able to save all the originals in case I wanna make a big movie you know, a year down the line or something with all my raw film. This is my uh, media technology transfer gadget. Basically, it allows me to upload all my videos and photos onto my external hard drive. It has an internal Wi-Fi that allows data transfer. This is my old iPhone. It still works perfectly fine, but it's just not connected to my uh, Verizon account. But I can still use it for a lot of different stuff. So just in case my current phone breaks down, I got a backup one. And in terms of filming, here is my tripod that I use to set up videos. Great for time lapses, uh, stationary when I'm just like at camp or something, or um, making how-to videos. This is really handy because I need to be able to use my hands for something else. And this is a, a hard case that con contains all of this electronic gear. It's super durable, highly recommend. And then more into tools, tools for this trip. Um, stuff that I still wouldn't normally bring with me on a backpacking trip. But because I'm gonna be traveling for so long and a lot of my gear is uh, leather-based, I wanna have a natural conditioner for all my leather products like my riding jacket, my boots, my gloves. Be able to condition it because it's gonna be exposed to a lot of elements on this trip and I don't want the leather to start cracking and be unhappy. So you apply that with a rag. There's no petroleum products in this. This is based out of Portland, Oregon. I love their products because you can put this on indoors. It's all natural based products. Um, so it's not bad for you. It doesn't make you sick. Not poisonous. Here's my Leatherman. Bought this when I was up in Montana um, over the summertime. All of the tools in here are real handy. Good to have that. And it's got the knife, all that good stuff. Here is my emergency fire starter kit. So this is a block of magnesium with a strip of flint on top. And so basically you use your knife and carve away shavings of the magnesium into a little pile and you spark it with some flint 
and it burns super, super hot. And you can put even damp uh, tinder and kindling on it and it'll still burn it. Um, great for emergency fires. This tool I got from a friend down in Ashland. Evidently, you can use these when you're in town and you need to get water. A lot of buildings have spigots on the outside, but they don't have handles. This thing actually allows you to access those spigots. Here's a little strips of patching material for tents, rain jackets, whatnot. Um, I used it before when the raccoons tore a hole in my uh, tent. This little guy is a glass repair kit. So I wear glasses and they loosen up from time to time. So this guy's got a little screwdriver in it, some pads um, for comfort and a couple extra screws just in case. Over here, um, so I'm a crafty person. I like to do uh, sewing stuff and I assume that maybe some of my clothes will get worn out during this trip. So I've got some embroidery thread in here, some needles. I've also got strips of Carhartt material for patches for pants. And if I just want to do any embroidery, honestly, I could just be camping out and embroidering something really pretty on a piece of clothing and just something to do in my time. And another great important thing to have when you're by yourself camping for extended periods of time out in the wilderness is some bear mace or bear spray. Basically, this is like highly compressionalized mace that normal people get, but uh, it can shoot, to, you know, 30 meters. So when the bear is real far, you just spray that. Here are all my nylon cords for tying down tarps, tying down my gear. You can never have too many cords. Never, never. Always great. And these items, lastly, are things that I am still contemplating whether to bring. All of them I like, all of them I want. I just need to decide whether it's all going to fit. They include my Bluetooth speaker. Um, it's my jam box. Uh, it produces tons of music and it's charged the same micro USB port so I can do it with my solar panel still. Just the uh, Bluetooth through my phone so I can play music wherever, whenever. Um, here's my little hatchet. Contemplating bringing that. This is a little scoping eyepiece, telescoping lens, so then you can like look at things real far away. Why not? Kind of cool to do when you're in the wilderness. Maybe look at birds. This is a Oregon white oak spoon that my uncle made for me. Um, he gave it to me as a solstice or Christmas gift and I love Oregon white oaks. I love spoons. And this is a little uh, boot brush and leather brushing kit. So if I want to clean off my shoes and take care of them, this would allow me to do that. So I hope this video was helpful for you and helps you plan out your next trip. Leave any comments down below on the video and have a great rest of your day.